In this video, we're going to be discussing some of the more detailed anatomy of the C2 vertebra, also called the axis. Now, in the previous video, we talked about the atlas, which is the C1 vertebra, and this atlas is going to sit directly on top of the axis, which we're going to be discussing here. And it turns out that there's going to be two sets of joints that are going to be formed between the atlas and the axis. And I'll go into more detail on this later, but the first set of joints is going to be between the facets, that is superior facets of the axis, and the inferior facets of the atlas. I hinted at that in the previous video. But I also mentioned that on the atlas we have here this median facet that's going to house the dens. And so the second joint is going to be between the dens right here and that median facet of the atlas. Okay, and that's going to form what's called a pivot joint. The other two are actually of the class condyloid joints. Right? So the axis is going to sit right beneath the atlas, but again, if you see this bone isolated by itself, you need to be able to determine what's superior and what's inferior. Now, with superior and inferior, you could, again, look at the facets. The same rules are true here that were with the atlas. Uh, the superior facets are larger, and the inferior facets are smaller. However, the much simpler way to identify what's superior is notice that the dens, this structure right here, points directly upward. So if you were to see this rotated upside down, see if I can even do that here, Actually, I can't. This won't allow me to do it. But if this dens were pointed directly downwards, you'd know you'd need to flip it 180 degrees. The dens always points upward. And so that brings up this. This is called the dens. Right? The other name for the dens is the odontoid process. Okay? And as I mentioned, that odontoid process is going to articulate with the median facet of the atlas. We also need to determine anterior and posterior because that will help us determine left and right. Now, the dens over here is closest to the anterior part. So that gives us a way this is anterior over here. This must be posterior. Okay? The other thing about the, the C2, the axis, is it has a spinous process, as we've talked about in previous videos. So this structure right here is the spinous process. And remember that I said all spinous processes, regardless of what vertebrae you're talking about, are posterior. So you can either look at it that way or look at the dens. But either way, we know this is anterior right here. We're closest to the posterior in this view, so we're looking at the person's back. So that being said, over here is the patient's right, and over here is the patient's left. So we'll keep this view for now. Let's first look at these superior facets. So just like the atlas, the axis, or C2, has superior facets. And remember, these superior facets of the axis are going to articulate with the inferior facets of the atlas and form, and form what are called condyloid joints. More specifically, they are the lateral atlantoaxial joints because they are between the atlas and the axis, and they're also lateral. Remember, we're also going to have another joint, which is the medial one. That involves the dens, but these are lateral. So this one over here would actually be the left superior facet of the axis, this would be the right superior facet. Okay? Now, if we look at the region between the dens and each of these superior facets, this region right here is going to be the pedicle. So over here, this is going to be the right pedicle. Over here would be the left pedicle. Okay? Now, a few other things here. We have the spinous process. Here's our spinous process. It's on the posterior side. Notice that the spinous process of the axis actually bifurcates. It has two little deviations right here, and that makes it what we call bifid, B-I-F-I-D, bifid. Okay, it's one of the only cases where we actually see anything like this. So the spinous process of the axis is bifid. All right, just like any other vertebra, the C2, the axis, has transverse processes. But notice something interesting is happening here. Notice the transverse process is angled downward. We don't see that with any of the other vertebrae. So here would be our left transverse process. Over here would be the right transverse process, both of which you can see are angled downward. Okay. Uh, we also see that they have transverse foramina. So this one over here would be the right transverse foramen. This one over here would be 
the left transverse four of them. And I hinted at this in the previous video when we talked about the atlas, that the vertebral artery is actually going to run through here. So the vertebral artery will be ascending upward. It'll go through this hole from the bottom, exit upward through the top of that transverse foramen. Then it will loop through the transverse foramen of the atlas, kind of move posteriorly around the lateral mass, and then across this groove for the vertebral artery, and then move upward into the neck. Coming back to the facets on the axis, um, if we look at the superior facets right here, what we see is there's again a thickened region, not quite as prominent as it was in the atlas, but this thickened region over here is of course going to be the lateral mass. So over here would be the right lateral mass, over here would be the left lateral mass. Now we're going to flip this upside down and look at the inferior aspect. So we know this is inferior because the dens does not point this direction. It always points superior or up. So this must be inferior. Also notice the inferior facets right here are much smaller than their superior counterparts. The same trend that we saw in the atlas. These inferior facets right here of C2 or the axis will articulate with the superior facets of C3. Okay? And they will form other condyloid joints, or facet joints as we'll call them. The other thing about this is that C3 through C7 vertebra do not have specific names. You just refer to them as C3, C4, and so on and so forth up to C7. Only C1 and C2 have these names. Okay? Now a couple other things that have to do with the dens, also called the odontide process. Remember over here on this side of it, let's actually rotate this a little further, this is the anterior face of the dens. Okay? Rotating it back like this, this is the posterior face of the dens. Each one of these is itself a facet. So right here, this one would be the posterior facet of the dens. Rotating around here, this would be the anterior facet of the dens. Now recall, we talked about this, the dens I mentioned is actually going to fit in to the atlas. So remember we had right here this facet of the atlas for the dens. So the dens is just going to sit right here against this facet on the axis. And specifically, it's actually the anterior facet. So it's actually this side of it that's actually going to sit directly on the facet of the atlas. Okay, right here, the median facet. All right. Now what about the posterior facet of the dens? Well, it turns out the posterior facet is actually going to be the site for what we call the transverse ligaments. Okay? So what are the transverse ligaments? Well, they're actually going to, on one side, attach to the posterior facet of the dens. And on the other side, they're going to attach to these tubercles right here. Look very closely. You can see these little bulges. They're not too big. Sort of bulges right here, one on this thickened area beneath the superior facet. So right here is one of these bulges. This is one tubercle. Rotating a little bit more, there's kind of a bulge right here. These are the tubercles for the transverse ligaments. So while the anterior facet of the dens is hugging the median facet of the atlas, on the other side of the dens, the posterior facet is actually attached to these transverse ligaments which run both directions. So one of those ligaments is going to go from the posterior facet of the dens to the right tubercle for the transverse ligament, and the other ligament is going to go toward the left from the posterior facet of the dens to the left tubercle for the transverse ligament. Unfortunately, there's not, as far as I know, a simpler name for that. It's just tubercle for the transverse ligament. Okay? And the reason I didn't mention that in the previous video is it wouldn't have made any context there because we hadn't talked about the dens or the axis in general. So I saved that for this video. Okay? And just understand that the axis and the atlas are going to form two sets of joints. One of those sets is actually between the superior facets of C2 and the inferior facets, those are going to be the lateral atlantoaxial joints, and the other one is going to be between the dens right here, particularly the anterior facet of the dens, and here we have this median facet right here on the atlas. That would be the median atlantoaxial joint. Um, when we're looking at the ones formed by these lateral facets right here, those are going to be simple condyloid joints, Whereas the one that's actually formed with the dens and the median facet of the atlas 
that's actually going to be a pivot joint. And what's worth noting before we conclude this video is if we look at that pivot joint in particular, the one that involves the dens and this median facet of the atlas, that's actually going to be what allows you to have neck rotation. So when you are shaking your head no, okay, when you rotate your head or cervical rotation, that's going to involve the pivot around this joint. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.